Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Jay Myrax of Altruist.com. Thanks again for checking out my videos. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the top lies that music producers are telling themselves and how these lies are potentially preventing them from achieving their goals as music producers. Now, the format of this video is a little bit different, so I'm just going to have audio in the preceding clip. And you'll find out later on why I'm choosing to go in this direction. I'm also going to leave a link in the video description to my SoundCloud if you prefer to enjoy audio that way. However, just sit back, enjoy the message. I know you're going to get a ton of value as a music producer and it's going to bless you. All right. Make sure you leave your comments and your thoughts below and we'll get back to you later. All right. Peace and God bless. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Jay Myrax of Altruist.com. Thank you for joining me once again. Thank you, everybody that's been subscribing to my channel. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because it really blesses me that so many music producers are willing to reach out to me and invest time in creating a relationship with me because I think that's really important for this community and this channel. In order for things to really build and become the best that they can become, I believe that we should be building with each other and learning from each other and growing with each other. So I thank you guys that are reaching out. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because things are gonna get a lot more interesting and we're gonna try to make things a lot more helpful for music producers. Not that they haven't been helpful before, but we just wanna to continue to push the boundaries and make things a lot more helpful for music producers to succeed. So today's topic is really gonna discuss some of the top lies that music producers are telling themselves and how those lies are preventing them from succeeding in their careers as music producers. Now, this particular topic was inspired by a recent email that I got from a music producer that was telling me that they felt that time or the lack of time was one of their biggest obstacles as a music producer. And it was the thing that was holding them back from really achieving success. And when the music producer told me that, it really resonated with me because I could identify with that feeling of not having time. I remember when I wasn't doing audio professionally, how often I felt just not equipped with the amount of time necessary to get things done. It often felt like just if I only had the time to do this all day, every day, that I would get so much more stuff done and things would be so much better. And I thought that the time that I didn't have, the time that I was dedicating to my job and to you know other aspects of life and those things that didn't have anything to do with music production were the main things that were obstacles for me. But what I found is that the reality of life is that time is not so much the issue. Time is always going Time is always going to be finite for someone that has a real life that has to deal with real things, but it's really about our habits and how we deal with our habits or how we manage the habits that we have and also our willpower. The willpower that we have is really one of the defining aspects of us as human beings for that matter. So the thing about it is that if you have good habits that are productive, you can get a lot more stuff done. It's not so much that if you had all day to do something, it would be all good because the reality of professional music production and professional audio production is that there's always time constraints. There's always deadlines. You never have all day to just, you know, do things as you feel inspired and just float in the wind until, you know, you get stuff done and just have a really lack, lackadaisical, you know, um, approach to creating and all that stuff. It's not really just this free form idealistic way of creating. 
You never really get that ability when you're doing things professionally. What often is the case is that as a professional, you get gigs and opportunities that have a deadline. So for example, somebody may hit you up and say, look, I need a 90 second audio piece that has these specific musical elements and it has to have this particular style and I need it for this car commercial that we're working on for say Toyota. We need this by tomorrow at noon. It is currently Monday, 8 a.m. I need it by Tuesday noon. So this is the type of situation that often can occur for a music producer in, in the form of a gig. And what are you gonna do? Knowing that, of course, eight to five, if you're not doing full-time music production, you're probably at a full-time job if you're gainfully employed. So you know that between eight and five, you can't work on anything. Okay, you have to wait until you get off of work. But are you gonna say now that because you have all these other commitments off of work, for example, you may have to go handle some business at home in terms of like cooking and cleaning and taking care of family and you know all these sorts of other things that have become a part of your routine. You may have all these things as a part of your routine, but those things don't have to become hindrances. Those things don't have to become obstacles. If you understand that the habits that you have really dictate the, the kind of time that you have, then you can make adjustments to your habits and potentially get more time back into your schedule in order to do things. So one of the things that I did specifically in my own life that helped me get more time back was to begin consuming more information in audio format. That's one of the things that really boosted my abilities to do things without having to feel like I couldn't continue to educate myself. Because for me, education is a good habit for me. It's, it's a habit that I enjoy. It's a habit that I feel like is very valuable. But at the same time, I know that usually if I'm educating myself, it means I'm either reading or I'm watching some type of video in order to learn something. And that's not always just feasible for time purposes. I know that sometimes if I have to sit down and be in front of a book or in front of a screen in order to learn certain things, it can take too much time away from me and cause me to feel frustrated because I don't have enough time to do other work. But what audio has done is it has allowed me to get away from the screens and the books when I don't have time to. Now, I'm not recommending that you guys stop reading or even watching videos for that matter because there's a time and place for that. But one way that I found that I was able to optimize my time was really looking at my habits, the things that I do as a routine. And I really looked at things that took me away from the computer and took me away from the books and I found that a lot of the things that were taking me away from the books were just normal, everyday, regular adult stuff, like having to do laundry or having to clean the house or having to cook or even having to drive to work. These are situations where audio has helped me substantially. Now, when I say audio, I'm referring to things like podcasts and audio books and things that are consumable in audio format that allow me to educate myself, get the knowledge, get the information in, but still allow me to do the routine things like driving or washing dishes or whatever I'm doing that's you know, like a more routine habit. And this was a way that I was able to get a lot more time back into my life. So you have to look at your habits and really make adjustments to your habits so that you can maximize your time. Like I said, it's not really a matter of you not having enough time. It's really how you manage your time. It's really how you deal with the time and your habits. If you don't establish good habits as a music producer, it can really hinder your ability to get stuff done. So I really recommend that you look at those habits that you have and make adjustments and not complain. Don't complain about what you don't have, but really look at what you do have and maximize it. And I think this goes for anything that you do in life. This can even be related to 
the equipment and the tools that you have because that's another lie that music producers tell themselves. One of the things I hear a lot from music producers is that, you know, they wish they had certain gear or certain features or certain things in their studio. And you hear all this stuff and I get it. Like there's certain things that you wish that you could do or you wish a certain product could do or whatever. But at the end of the day, even if you don't have that stuff, are you gonna allow that to stop you from getting work done? This is a different day. This is a brand new day. And there's a lot of hacks and things that you can do in your life that can allow you to get more time, a lot more flexibility, and just get stuff done more efficiently. Recently, the new Kendrick Lamar album just came out and one of the producers, Steve Lacey, has been all over the internet and they've been highlighting his story about how he creates music using only an iPhone. And the music he's creating is amazing. It's not just some bubble gum, rinky dink sounding stuff. He's producing some really high quality musical stuff on an iPhone. Of course, an iPhone is not a fully featured DAW environment that has all the, the plugins and the tools and all the things that you would have on a big DAW, but the man is creating amazing music. Modern day miracles, as I called it. And He's doing it on a very limited device, something that he can take wherever he goes and be creative. And that's another hack that you can really use in your own life. Start looking at things that you can bring into your situation that allow you to capture or create whenever or wherever you're inspired. Because you don't always have the ability to work in a studio. Sometimes you have to be more resourceful and just work when you can work. So the fact that Steve Lacey is doing a lot of his stuff, or all of his stuff for that matter, on the iPhone is pretty impressive and I think it's very thoughtful and just very resourceful. So we have to stop telling ourselves lies that we don't have the right equipment or the right features features or the right capabilities and that's what's keeping us from making songs. At the end of the day, it's our willpower. It's our ability to push through. It's our ability to continue on that helps us to achieve our goals. It's not really what we have, it's what we do with what we have. You know, when you're working as a professional and you have time constraints, you have to have the willpower to say, okay, if my project is due at 12 p.m. tomorrow, and I know that I get home at six or seven, and I know I need eight hours to work, I guess I need to stay up late. This might be one of those opportunities that I can't miss, so I need to push through. I need to use my willpower in order to get stuff done. and. I'm not gonna tell somebody that I can't do it because it's not enough time if I know it's a great opportunity. Having that willpower to say that I can make this work and I'm going to sacrifice whatever it takes in order to get it done is how real music producers work. That is how things get done. That's why a lot of times in the real production world, people are working 20 hour days straight trying to get things done because that's just what it's taking for them to really get the product done. It's not just because they wanna work 20 hours. It's just that sometimes the project requires that amount of time, that amount of focus. So if you need to do a 90 second commercial cue and you only have a day and really you only have some hours in the evening time, if you start at 8 p.m. and you know you need eight hours, guess what? This might be the night that you gotta stay up until four and you have to deal with it. It's not gonna be like that every time, but are you going to allow yourself to miss out on an opportunity just because it challenges your routine? Are you going to let yourself say, I can't do this because I gotta wake up at five, so if I gotta work until 4 a.m., that's not gonna work. This might be the time where you have to say, I can push through one day. One day ain't gonna kill you one day is not gonna kill you, okay? Now I'm not saying make a habit of getting one hour sleep. 
So don't get it confused. But what I am saying is that sometimes you need to use your willpower and your sense in order to say, I'm going to make sure that I don't miss out on this opportunity and I'm gonna press through until I get this stuff done. All right, like I said, it's not that you don't have enough time. It's not that you don't have enough things for that matter. It's about your resourcefulness. It's about your habits. It's about controlling your habits, creating good habits and using your willpower to see things through until completion. If your habit right now is that you come home, you make a beat, you start on it, but you don't finish it or you don't get it to a place where you can begin writing to it, or you don't get it to a place where someone else can begin writing to it because you just got into a habit of starting a beat and then moving to the next and not really fleshing out anything or getting things to a point where they are useful to people, you're holding yourself back, okay? If you're doing stuff without a purpose, if you're just wasting a lot of time continuing to do things over and over without any purpose, that is a bad habit. And we talked about that in a previous video. It's your habits that really define the amount of time that you have. So consider changing your habits. If not finishing things is what's preventing you from getting to that next stage, then you need to see what is it gonna take for me to finish things. A lot of times is the stuff that you don't like doing that's holding you back. And that's where your willpower comes in. That's when you have to get to that point where you say, well, I don't like doing A, B, and C, but guess what? In order for me to get to that next level, I have to do it. So my willpower has to come in. If that means that I gotta spend another hour and a half that I could be spending on making more beats, if I gotta spend an hour and a half tracking out stuff or arranging stuff or labeling things or organizing things in order to get to that next level, do it. You have to put the work in. Stuff is not gonna get done on its own, okay? So as I said, don't focus on what you don't have. Look at what you do have and make the most of it. I just want to tell you guys that hopefully you can take some of this information, digest it, take a look at your own situation and figure out how you can get some more of your time back. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure that you go to my website, www.altruist.com. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description on my YouTube channel for this video. So click on the link there. I have a free six part video course entitled Sound Mind Sessions. Sign up for that, it's free, it's six part course. It's really helpful for music producers. So I, I highly recommend it, all right? So until next time, I just wanna tell y'all peace and God bless.